What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup, back with another video, and I'm back with my third video in a day. Today has been long, I've been to work as well, would you believe it? But I decided to do another video, because this morning I did something for like the first time ever, which is sort of like the newsy, gossipy sort of stuff. It's something that I've been wanting to add to the channel for a while, but I wanted to think about the right way on how I wanted to do it. So I'm not always going to be fully up to the time. Um, you know, I'm not worried about, you know, getting everything out there straight away. Um, you know, I want to be able to think about the news a little bit and talk about it, you know, less in the reading the articles to the extreme and more just how I feel about them. And another thing as well is I don't like rumor videos. I haven't for a very long time. So like for a prime example could be at the beginning of the year, you know, big Navi or Nvidia Ampere rumors when we know it wasn't going to be out for months and people are saying it's going to be this much and do this much. Like, you know, just far fetched stuff, even though the Nvidia RTX lineup, the 3000 series is is seriously powerful. But you, you know what I mean? I just don't like that constantly clutching at straws sort of rumor videos. But I wanted to sort of talk about stuff that's in the news a little bit and partly as well because you can't buy any bloody graphics cards. I wanted to get a 3080 for a review, which is a video that we made this morning, discussed about that, all the scalpers, all you dirty buggers, um, and everybody also snatching up all the stock for the uh, PlayStation 5 as well. But from speaking to a lot of my friends, you know, plenty of people I know have managed to get a pre-order and have actually managed to get themselves a console. And there are some going for like inflated prices on eBay, but a lot of them are only going for about £100 more. So that's good to see. I hope lots of people are going to get themselves a new PlayStation, new games console, or hopefully get to build themselves a new PC by the end of the year. But it's going to be hard. And this is probably, in a way, more bad news. But I think it's really good news. The news that we have for you right now is because there's a lot of people that are going to be gutted that they couldn't get 3080 yesterday. There's going to be a lot of people that are gutted thinking, how the hell am I going to get a 3070? I'm, I'm really panicking panicking about that one but this one is pretty much confirmed news because it comes from gigabyte of all people they accidentally leaked some data of upcoming graphics cards that they have um, and these are something that we definitely want to see it's something that i'm really happy to see and this is nvidia cards with more vram and then also as well the rtx 3060 i know a lot of people think it's going to be the 3060 ti maybe it will maybe it won't but um when you see the slide in a second it's it hasn't got anything that's got the ti suffix it just looks maybe just a 3060 but i could see them releasing a 3060 and a 3060 ti which we'll save that for another day so let's have a little look at this picture then hopefully we'll have the picture up on screen and then we're going to talk about it a bit more and why this might be good for you waiting for the card with more vram and why actually it might not be because you know we're going to talk about this like do you actually need this much you know you might want this much but do you actually need this much so obviously we've got the let's have a little look here dun, 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 dun. so we have the gvn 306 seagull by the looks of it <laughs> Over overclocked eight gigabytes edition so that is basically the 3060 um and there's the se so we don't know if the se stands for titan it might do and Agle could sound for Agile, I don't know what it is, but basically we've got a 6 Series confirmed and a lot of people are saying October. I'd be a bit surprised if it was October, I could definitely see one coming out, but quite often the last ones, I think the, yeah, the 2060 didn't come out till January, February, so I don't know, I'm not hoping for it. If we get one in November, October, November, great, but I think it will come out February, end of January, that sort of first paycheck after Christmas, that's when I can see that card coming out, okay? when i can see that card coming out um and then we've got this 16 gigabyte models of the um so we've got the auras and the gaming of the 3070 um six two 16 gigabyte models confirmed and then we have three or four four 20 gigabyte versions confirmed so we've got the aurus x 20 gigabyte we've got the turbo 20 gigabyte what else have we got we've got the aurus m 20 gigabyte and then we've got the gaming oc 20 gigabyte as well so good things very good for all you flight simmers out there. I don't know, has it got a built-in benchmark? I don't think it'll be something I'll be testing on the channel very soon. I, I normally get bullied into adding new games. Like it took me like a year to put Fortnite on there because I don't know, I'm stuck in my ways. I, I can't see myself playing flight sim anytime soon, but I, I know quite a few people that do. And I definitely think that'll be good. And it's something that I was talking with my friend Trevor from We Got A Problem Gaming the other day actually, is that, you know, the VRAM hasn't creeped up in a while, has it? There's, they've not added more to it and I, and I could, I could see this happening. When I seen the NVIDIA launch, I thought, 8 gigs and 10 gigs? You know, it will probably be enough for most, but, you know, you sort of wanted more, especially knowing that the consoles, like, they've just got so much power in them for the money, haven't they? 8-core Ryzen processor, 1-terabyte NVMe processors, 
10 to 12 teraflop GPUs and 16 gigabytes of VRAM, 450 pounds. Do you know what I mean? It's it's hard to come close to that, but it just made me think that, you know, although these new NVIDIA GPUs are real powerful, are they being good old NVIDIA and being stingy on the VRAM? And, and NVIDIA's VRAM allocation is good. Okay, so I think it comes down to, you know, what, what, what do you want? You know, what, what are you gonna want from it? Like if you're playing Flight Simulator, and 100% you've got a really big case for having all that extra VRAM. If you actually use it for content creation, um, one thing that springs to mind is like DaVinci Resolve. If you're using that heavily GPU intensive and you want all that GPU memory, 100%, you know, that'd be very good to have. And I feel that if those big Navi cards come out with 16 gigabytes, AMD, AMD, Nvidia are gonna have to do it anyway, but it depends what it comes down to at cost, because this is where it comes down to future proofing. And that's what you're gonna say, future proofing. Let me have some water. My views on future proofing. I don't believe in it. I think it's absolutely bullshit. You're gonna be going mad in the chat. But I, I don't believe in future proofing. There's a couple of places. What's popping up over here? Some bright light going on. There's a couple of places where Troy believes in future proofing. Buying a bigger power supply because you know you're gonna buy a high-end graphics card in a year. Getting slightly more RAM, yeah. Other than that, just buy the best you got with your money and enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? But there's going to be a big case here. I've got more VRAM for the future. Now, if you are someone that keeps a graphics card for four years, I know a lot of people do that. If you upgrade every two to three generations, not every generation, then I can understand your shout for having more VRAM. But if you're someone that cashes in before the going gets rough, before your 28 ETI is worth nothing, then you might not need to be worrying about this so much because you need to think about what you're going to be playing and how games are going to be. Now, one big argument I would say is that actually because of the 16 gigabyte VRAM in the consoles and because they're using pretty much all AMD parts, it's going to be easier to port games over. I think it's like Microsoft titles as well. I think they'll be easier to port over, but they'll be used to using more VRAM. That's a big argument that you could say, but then they're also going to have to optimize that game for the S that only has eight gigabytes of VRAM. See what I'm saying? Or is it 10? 10 gigabytes of VRAM. So optimizations could be there so that's a big shout as well and for me as well like i'm looking at getting the 3070 to pair of a 1080p 240 hertz monitor so with that 240 hertz screen do you know what i mean i'm not going to be using massive amounts of vram i'm just trying to push the frames i'll even drop a few settings if it won't get me there which i imagine it probably will for most of the games that i want to play and again as well even at 1440p do you know what i mean if you're gaming at 2k high refresh rate on a 3080 ask yourself do you need 20 gigabytes of vram if you're not playing flight simulator so if it's too much money extra it might not be worth it that's just my views i know a lot of you are going to disagree with me a lot of you're going to say future proof this and future proof that and it's we got it for later amd fine wine and all of that crap but by the time you actually find you might be using that you've probably already got a new graphics card so that's where i see it but there's someone else i'd like to talk about as well with that and where you might be thinking that because games could suddenly get very demanding in the next year or so i could be wrong like i said that 16 gigabytes of vram in the consoles games could start flexing their muscles all right they could really start flexing it and needing that extra space and that would be you know possibly a good shout because you'd maybe look at say because we don't know the benchmarks yet say a 3070 8, 8, 8 gig and a 3070 16 gigabyte and the 16 gigabyte only performs a few frames more better that's what you might be looking at it but what you might find is because you're running loads of games that are maxing out your VRAM, you're going to find that that game's not as smooth. Not as smooth. It's, this is a little bit different, but I had reviewed the RX 580, 480, 480, 4 gigabyte, and 480, 8 gigabyte extensively. Both of those cards, and they performed really close to each other in frame rate. But I noticed as soon as I started running ultra settings, ultra, you know, maxing out that 4 gigabytes, which is way lower than the numbers we're talking about you notice little stutters you notice the gameplay not being as smooth and that was something that i got in an argument with a lot of people about they were like same as well 1063 gigabyte versus six six by the by versus the six gigabyte loads of people it only performs five frames let's save the money you don't need it you know i can run an ultra yeah you can but it's just not as smooth do you know what i mean as soon as you start maxing out that vram you get all them stutters and stuff i feel like i'm just waffling on so it's a waffle video so yeah 16 gigabyte 3070 cards confirmed 20 gigabyte 3080 cards confirmed there's so many numbers i'm getting it all wrong ps5 sold out not going to say ps4 in this video like i did loads in the other one and possibly an rtx 3060 ti or a standard 3060 hopefully out in november but i think it will be next year what are your thoughts on that 
let me know below and yeah get used to this i like to rant and waffle <laughs>